Good morning and welcome to our celebration of the third Sunday of Easter at St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Essex Fells, New Jersey. We welcome all of you who are watching this worship service online on Sunday and all of you who will be able to see it during the week if you haven't been able to join us on Sunday. On your website, there is uh, the St. Peter's website. There is a, a bulletin where you can follow along at home. And now that we pr may prepare our hearts and minds for worship, we'll listen to a prelude played by our organist, John Kravarnik. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we gather with joy to worship God, let us call to mind our need of divine forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Kyrie eleison. You forgave sinners and welcomed the outcast. Christe eleison. You breathe your spirit to heal our souls and bring us strength. Kyrie eleison. Glory be to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we stand and sing the Easter hymn, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain.
Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us hear now the lessons. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation, so those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is 116, verses 1 to 3 and 10 to 17. We will read responsively by half verse. If I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord? For all the good things he has done for me. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the, in the midst, midst of you, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from the first book of Peter. If you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors. Now with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word 
of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn today is Day by Day from the Broadway musical Godspell. I will sing the first verse. It's quite repetitive, so if you don't know it, you'll learn it. And if you already know it, please feel free to sing along with us. Um, and we will be singing it a cappella. So if you want to add a tambourine at home, go for it. Okay. Day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, day by day. Oh dear Lord, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more nearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day, day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray. See thee more clearly, follow thee more nearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day by day by day by The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now on that same day, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. One of them whose name was Cleopas answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them what things? They replied the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucify him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place, for over some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, 
He walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. While he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. The men on the road need to see more clearly, just as our sequence hymn says. That first prayer is to see thee more clearly so that we can love Christ more dearly and follow him more nearly day by day. But how do we learn to see Christ at work in the life of the world today, in our own lives, in the lives of the people around us? What do we need to look for? How do our eyes need to be opened? More importantly, how do our eyes need to be trained to see the Christ energy, the Christ pattern, the Christ presence at work? These two men, are so lost in their disappointed expectations that they couldn't see it was Jesus. Jesus had to give them a different framework for what the presence of Messiah meant. He had to show them that the marks and the signs and the pattern of messianic action were different than they had thought. This was true of all of the disciples. In the last few weeks of this great mission, they had one expectation of great triumph, and he had another, that the way to triumph was going to be harder, was going to involve suffering and dedication and take time. But once they saw it, once he took that bread and broke it and shared it in that familiar gesture of generosity that Jesus had extended to all kinds of people, not just in his last supper, but in suppers and meals throughout his entire ministry, throughout his entire campaign to win Israel's heart. Once they saw that familiar action and they put it together with the framework that he'd given them, their eyes were open and they saw him. And this could happen to us our eyes can suddenly be opened and we can see it at work, this pattern, the shape of how Christ acts through his spirit now at work. I saw the pattern and shape of Christ would peek out through the face and eyes and actions of a fictional character on television. A very cold, judgmental, haughty woman who's one of the chief characters on the PBS series World on Fire that I've mentioned before. She's got very exacting standards for everyone, which made her a very unfeeling mother, which she's ready to admit. But when her son brings home a Polish refugee boy from having been in Poland at the outbreak of the war and goes off to war himself in the British army, she faces grudgingly the task of motherhood. And as she does it, you begin to see some sense of compassion grow, some sense of flexibility grow that she didn't have with her own son. When she discovers that the boys at the school he's going to have bullied him, they circled around him and they ignorantly called him German and gave him a black eye. 
She marches him up to school and uses this sharp tongue that she's practiced all her life to read them out in a very, very simple and factual way and say they have made a mistake. That they've actually persecuted a boy whose relatives are fighting and dying against the enemy. And you can see on their faces that she speaks the word of judgment, not to condemn them, but to enlighten them. To say, you have gotta treat this kid differently. He is really one of us. Now, as the gospel lesson tells us, Christ can be walking right beside us and we may not realize his presence. Jesus clears their vision so that they can see him. Our secular world might say that this woman in the TV series is merely becoming more human. But that begs the question of what human means. Humanity comes in many different varieties and shapes and tempers and passions, everything from the worst to the best. So what kind of human is she becoming is the question. Now the pagan gods of Jesus' day reflected the whole rich variety of human nature. From good to evil, they were passionate, violent, fickle, jealous, beautiful, dangerous, capable of justice, yes, capable of bestowing favoritism, capable of succoring and helping anybody if you knew when they might show up. Now, there was a better kind of paganism emerging in Jesus' time. I don't want to simply run down the ancient ancestral religions of Greece and Rome, but the greater self that was reflected in Jesus was a mirror of the God he worshiped. The qualities of the divine source of life that were being come to know, uh, being come to known uh, among the ancient Hebrews. Through the preaching of the prophets, through the development of what became the Torah, they were worshiping a God of greater consistency than the ancient pagan gods a greater consistency in promise and reward, a passionate dedication to the well-being of the world and humanity, a compassionate, just, patient, forgiving, supportive Lord, whose judgment was in the service, people more and more realized, of enlightening us so that we didn't do things that were destructive to ourselves and others. So Jesus was for his disciples an icon and image of the incarnation of humanity's flourishing goodness, which flows from God's own character. So what did I see that made me feel that Christhood was peeking out in this woman? Well, of course, it was the dawning of compassion in her heart, but it was the pairing of her well-honed judgmental tongue to the service of loving justice. Those boys needed somebody to get through to them. And they knew what it was like to be read out in British terms. And they got the message and it changed their behavior. And it's this combination of opposites that's part of the pattern of Christ that's manifested in the life of Jesus. Mercy and judgment in dynamic balance. Again, to enlighten, to educate, to grow and to build. The Son of God came into the world not to condemn the world, St. John says, but that the world through him might be saved, saved from its own self-destructiveness. So that compassion is one of the marks of Christ. It's a compassionate presence to be really listening, hearing. He got people. All of us have had the experience of trying to tell someone something important to us and they're not really listening. But I hope you've all had the experience of more than one time, more than one person, of listening to a person who's really hearing you. And there's something about having that person absorb your feelings empathetically, having that person kind of get where you're coming from that can sometimes take the rough edge 
of whatever distress you're telling people away. My wife has that capacity, and I've had to learn from her to hone my own. Peter and Thomas, among the disciples, were recipients of that listening, understanding ear. Jesus got them. He dubbed Peter the head and called him a rock when he was a rather volatile and erratic person, but Jesus saw the potential in him. And when Thomas in last week's gospel is not going to accept the apostles' testimony, he wants to see Jesus for himself, Jesus honors that. Jesus gets where Thomas is coming from. Instead of scolding him, he lets him touch his, his side. And he says, blessed are those who don't need that. But he understood what Thomas needed. So that presence of the Christ is also healing balm, forgiveness, demon-breaking power. Whether demons are part of the supernatural world or simply part of our own character, we can get possessed by demons in various ways that make us slavery to our own impatience, make us slavery to our own hungers, make us slavery to our own anger. And yet, we can be in the presence of people with, in whose presence those demons are stilled. Gert Bahana tells the story, the woman who wrote the book, The, the Late Great Liz, about her years in alcoholism. She, was, she had rejected God, she had been through three marriages, and she had dinner with some compassionate friends one night who happened to be Christians, and she wasn't having any of that. And there was something about the way they treated her that broke the power of the demon. She went to her bedroom, she reflected on why these people were treating this broken down suburban drunk, which is what she thought of herself in her own self-loathing, the way they were treating her with the kindness they were treating her, when they had no manifest reason for doing that. And for the first time in years, she knelt down beside her bed and started saying the Lord's Prayer. And she got no further than our Father when she says there was this cascade of love that, that, that flowed over her and penetrated her and flowed through her. And she knew what this was. She knew that this was God. And it broke the power of that demon. And she joined one of the very early AA groups and kept that demon at bay for the rest of her life. So there is that compassion, that compassion of presence, which can be a healing balm. And there's a generosity and welcome, which is symbolized by that breaking of the bread and sharing it. We see it in the gospel stories of the feeding of the thousands, the welcoming of the sinner and the outcast. The stepping beyond the strictures of Psalm 1, which tell us not to have anything to do with sinners, from a person who can go among the wayward and bring a presence that calls them back to their better selves. That's what Jesus did. I've experienced that in my own life, of being in the presence of someone who accepts things in me that I thought were unacceptable. This is a generosity I found among friends, but most especially among the family that I married into, who accepted the baggage that I was carrying and stood with me as I struggled with the things that I brought into that marriage emotionally. I know what it is to feel that I don't belong and to be welcomed in a place of belonging and loved for who I truly was. And finally, there is the faithfulness to the prophetic way of personal righteousness and corporate justice that was the heart of the preaching of the prophets and that Jesus is, re, re, republishes and interprets more deeply in his own day. And in your service leaflet, 
you'll find later on in the leaflet, it's on page 12, I think, a list of these marks of the prophetic way, these marks of the way of Christ, which you can pursue at your leisure. Because for early Christians, belief was a pledge of allegiance to a way of life, not an abstract notion in the head. It would trust meant allegiance, faith meant allegiance. Religion meant the specific details of worship and behavior like the person in our psalm who's rescued from danger and promises to go and make the appropriate sacrifices and to fulfill his vows to do the good things that he said he's doing. This shows us that finally, for early Christians, Christ was not just a person, but a pattern. A person manifest, that manifested the creative, redeeming, challenging love of God. A window open into the word or wisdom of God that had been at play since the foundation of the world. All of these characters of compassionate presence, healing balm, generosity and welcome, faithfulness to the way of righteousness had been at play since the foundation of the human race and even before. In Jesus, the spirit that was operative was the spirit that brooded over the waters at the beginning of creation bringing forth light out of darkness. It was brooded over the beginnings of the human race, teaching humanity how to live together. It taught humanity to learn the ways of compassion and justice, of fair judgment, enlightening judgment. Jesus' resurrection was the explosion of the presence of this life-giving spirit at work from the beginning of the world, manifest in Christ and now released into the world to be caught by people who would find that this spirit, this Christ, this Christ pattern could emerge in their own lives in small ways, in large ways, step by step until they became reflections of the Christ who died and rose again for the life of the world. Amen. And now we stand and affirm our pledge of allegiance to the living Christ and his way of life in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and once seen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. We the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. For all, who, oh, for all who follow Christ, that their faith in the resurrection of Jesus may deepen. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who renewed their baptismal promises at Easter, that any lingering doubts may soon be dispersed. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who spread the good news about Christ, in the nearness of his kingdom, that the joy of Eastertide may fill them with fresh zeal. 
We pray for those celebrating a birthday, Katie Evers, Dante Chance, Pam Seaman, and David Cowell, and celebrating an anniversary, Lynn and Mark Livingston, and Esther and John Pavarnik. In your mercy, Lord. For the President of the United States, the Governor of this state, and all in authority, that they may discern wisely the common good and serve the needs of your people. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For people who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, that by your spirit their strength may be renewed and your healing presence sustain them. Ruth Ann, E.J. Sebel, Jean Whiting Smith, Sally Smith, Kathy Stanton, Karen Toper, Peg Valentino, and Eileen White. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all people at immediate risk in this pandemic, for frontline workers, those who work in dangerous conditions, those risk, who risk themselves and others, ignorantly or foolishly, those who face financial hardship, and all who are hard pressed. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. This morning we pray for Kenneth F. Dietz, Margaret and Ray Morrison, and Jean and Bud Sargent, in whose memory the altar is adorned. And for those who have died recently, especially N and N, the God's light may shine on them perpetually. In your mercy, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of our salvation, your glory shines throughout the world. Bring hope and healing to your people. Hear our prayers and grant us your all-sufficient grace in time of need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we come to our announcement time. As our e-blast that went out before this uh, service indicated, we're going to have an online coffee hour beginning at 11 o'clock this morning. The eight o'clock congregation has long since self-organized into online coffee hours. We're now gonna try it with a bigger group of people at 11 a.m. on Sunday. So after you finish watching this service, if you're watching in, uh, uh, at, at the 10 o'clock time, please join us for that online coffee hour. I'll be presiding because it's a little unwieldy to have a lot of people on Zoom, but uh, we'll have a chance to catch up with each other uh, and greet one another and speak with each other. Also, please watch um, on the eblast, and if you if you aren't on the eblast, there's always information about how to get on the eblast. Uh, it comes from uh, Terry Kornstein, and uh, her email address is right there as it comes to you get yourself on the e-blast because it's the best way to be connected. Uh, there's going to be a list of resources coming to you at the very beginning of the week uh, with uh, information about local businesses, some of which you may know, some of which you may not know. The vestry is concerned that the parish uh, have, have as much information possible as how, uh, as how, we, can, um, how we can cope in, in better ways and what would seem to be a further extended period of time. Um, as you know, we don't know exactly how this virus is going to play out. The governor of our state is being very careful and looking forward to some gradual reopening, but it's going to be a while. We need to follow the facts. So look for that informational email that will come to you, uh, I hope, on Monday. Finally, as you know, St. Peter's is still in business. Our staff is very much at work. And when we come to the offertory, you'll have a chance, if you are able, to continue supporting the parish. And we thank you very much for those of you whose, um, whose online donations and whose uh, mailings are coming to us. You'll get a lot more information about this in an onward, which will be, which will be published in early May and come to everyone's home. And now we come to our time of peace. As in the silence of our heart, 
We send peace and compassion to those whom we love, especially those who are frontline workers, putting themselves at risk, and all those who we feel need our passion, compassion, and love. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. We pray together, O God, who has taught us that in quietness and confidence shall be our strength, let the peace of Christ reign in our hearts and be shed abroad through us as a blessing for all who cross our path. Amen. And now as we prepare to offer ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, to God in service, we'll hear John play a simple piece of music. was the melody of Now the Green Blade Rises, a wonderful Easter hymn that talks about the power of God manifested everything from the green blade rising to the rising of Christ, to the rising of hope in our hearts in any time of stress and difficulty. And so as we offer ourselves to God in these final prayers, we first of all have a prayer in time of pandemic. This hour we turn to you, O Lord, in full knowledge of our frailty, our vulnerability, and our great need as your mortal creatures. We cry to you as one human family unsure of the path ahead, unequal to the unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and death that seem all too real to us now. Stir up your strength and visit us. O Lord, be our shield and rock and hiding place. Guide our leaders, our scientists, our nurses and doctors. Give them wisdom and courage and determination. Make even this hour, O oh Lord, a season of blessing for us. That in fear we find you mighty to save, and in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. Be our light in the darkness, O oh Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all the perils and dangers of this moment. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all our infirmities, Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Amen. And now we pray for our families. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sets the solitary in families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. But far from them every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who joined in holy union have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children, the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affectioned one to another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now to offer ourselves to God in service, we join together in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your servants do give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all humankind. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we earnestly pray, give us that due sense of all your mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And summing up all our prayers, we join the prayer of Christ, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May God, the Father who raised Christ from among the dead, raise you from the deadening power of sin. Amen. Amen. May the Christ who triumphed over the powers of darkness and brought life and immortality to light fill you with the power of his victory. Amen. May the Holy Spirit breathed upon the apostles in the upper room, shed abroad God's love in our hearts and work through our lives. Amen. And may the blessing of the all-merciful God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, O Praise Thee the Lord, the first, second, and fourth verses. <laughs> now as our transition back to the ordinary levels of life, John will pay play for us a postlude. <laughs> Thank you again for joining us for this online worship. We wish you well and God's blessing through the days of this week. Go forth in peace.
rejoicing in the power of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.